Hello, I'm Robert, a fact checking and helping you if you're scared of many things. And this is, uh, if you're worried that the universe uh, might suddenly vanish because of false vacuum decay or anything else. Um, and it's, if it's caused by matter, for instance by black holes or whatever, it doesn't matter how much space time has expanded. And apart from the fact, and remember, I, if you uh, saw the original video, then for the very first fraction of a microsecond, then the universe was changing very quickly. From a cosmological point of view, from then on, then it's dull, boring, the same again, 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 just the same universe with no changes. So just the very first fraction of a microsecond for the first M is the only time in all this time when anything interesting was happening from the point of view of a cosmologist. So now, if the thing you're worried about, a hypothetical thing, is not, uh, doesn't, is caused by matter, or it just, it doesn't depend on how big the universe is, then uh, these are all millennia. And each millennia is just as boring as the previous one. Nothing special about any of the M's. So then what I want you to do, see the scroll bar there, uh, so you can get an idea of how far we're going through the file. And each of these is a thousand years since the Big Bang. So we have the Big Bang just now. So let's try scrolling down. It's one page, two page, three pages, four pages. Have a look at the at that thing, the scroll bar up there. All these thousands of years. Imagine skipping through so many thousands of years. Another another lots and lots of thousands of years and again and again and again. And you're hardly getting anywhere in the in this vast, vast file of so many, many thousands of years. Keep tapping away. You can you may be able to hear me tapping away at my keys really fast and each one is a new page, and yet we're getting nowhere near this through this file. It, it would take so long to get to the Earth being born that it's I, 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 it would take up much of this video to get there. So let's just skip up to the top. So now if we I've got some links there to some uh, useful points. So that's the Earth being born. This is when the Earth was born, 4.5 million millennia away. As you can see, that's it's about two thirds of the way through, very, very approximately, a little slightly. It's, it, you can see where it is about then. Now starts calling from there, from when the Earth was born. Still going, now again, you know, I have to click lots of times or hold it down for a long time before, and even holding it down so it's clicking faster than I can click. It's still it's going to take you forever to, to ages to get to, to the end. So then we get to the end of the dinosaurs. And now we, um, we still, it's, it's, it's still not more than one page, quite a few pages to go from the end of the dinosaurs to the evolution of humans. It's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So twelve of these pages of M's. So um, that's uh, whatever, 70 million years or something like that. 60, 70 million years, I'm not sure what number I used, um, but uh, I've, I've got the details here somewhere. And so that gets you to the first humans. And that's 200,000 years ago. And still, that's every thousand years since the first, that's the first humans, modern humans. Before then, we had Homo erectus and things like that, and they had fire and so on, and they go back quite a long way. But uh, uh, th these are the first anatomically modern humans, and genetically, just like us, same brains, and uh, uh, s s s same biologically. And then if you go all the way through, eventually at this point, you have a, a very ancient Lascaux cave paintings, where you may have seen those rather beautiful paintings of uh, paintings of animals on the caves of the Lascaux cave in France. And so that is back then, and you've got these thousands of years. Then you've got the Great Pyramids, and the Egyptians built the pyramids. You've got Stonehenge about roughly about the same time. And then you've got um, Jesus born, and then there's still another couple of M's, and then it's us today. So nothing happened in all of those M's. 
And remember I talked about the Bayesian inference, how if you think of each m as being like you picked out, you've got a, a vase, and if you think each m being blue means that the, that the Earth survived, and the universe survived. So you first survived that one, it's a blue bead, blue bead, blue bead, blue bead, and, and it would be a red bead if the universe doesn't, if the universe vanishes. So for all these M's, we kept getting blue beads, blue beads, blue beads, blue beads, blue beads, going to Earthborn, and everything is fine, everything is fine. And remember, the more this happens, the more confidence you have that the next M is also going to be a blue bead. In other words, the universe surviving. And now end of dinosaurs, evolution of humans, and all of these are the part of blue beads, universe surviving. So we expect the next one to also be like that. So that is the um, simple argument just using thousands of years. Now I need to just um, quickly go through the this ends. So what's the ends about? So if you go to the ends, oh, oh there we are, it comes up quite quickly. So uh, with the false vacuum decay, when it's quantum tunneling, then it depends on the size of the universe. So when it was uh, only a thousand years old, we only had a volume of a thousand light years cubed for anything to happen in. I'm just being approximate here, not using general relativity, but it's a reasonable approximation. And then uh, just, just for the sake of of the, uh, just to talk about this to you. So uh, I I do not, I am not an expert in general relativity. I am not an expert in any of this. I understand the basic maths because I trained as a mathematician, but my ex expertise in maths was in a very different direction. And there would only be a few dozen people in the entire world who understand the proper maths behind all this, of all of the things. And there'd be rather more, maybe a few hundred, in the world, I don't know that we don't stand general relativity uh, pretty well. Or maybe, maybe I don't might get into thousands, I'm not sure. But they're not, not that many who really thoroughly understand it. So, uh, so a a anyway, and then you get to, fall to the force vacuum decay, it's smaller numbers, quite a bit smaller. So, uh, so this is just to give you a rough idea, and just based on basic principles and simple ideas that to, and uh, to get an idea of how it works. So the bigger the universe is, there's more space for anything to happen in. And so then uh, if it's caused by space-time itself, then the, the uh, at the beginning of this file, each n is, the, f the first n is th uh, over 300 millennia long. So that's how to think about it. Because what matters is the volume of space-time. So you've got a thousand light years in um, uh, across, and then I should say proportional to thousand light years cubed. And then as it goes on, it's proportional to to uh, uh, thirteen point eight million light years cubed. I've got the proper calculation at the end of this simple approximate simple way of looking at it. So that first n is 323.7 millennia, according to this way of looking at it, because to compensate for it not, not being very deep, not very being large in space, we made it very deep in time. And remember, it's expanding all that time. And then um, right at the end, the, uh, the current time, then it's, each one is 1,000 uh, years long. So now we can go to uh, each millennia is, so remember we can pop down like this, keep down, 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 just the same as the other one, and um, you can go a long, long way before you notice any difference. Now at this point, uh, each n is, is, is 8,000 years, and the Earth is born, and the Earth is born a little bit before uh, uh, and then a little bit after that, you get to each n is is 2,000 years. Then you get to each n is 1,100 years, and that's still a long, long time ago. And you've still got millions of lots and lots of ends to go. 
you keep scrolling down and down and down and then eventually you'll get to the dinosaurs up there where they got, got to evolution of humans spread to the dinosaurs there we are head to the dinosaur era and by now each hand is, is roughly is very close to a thousand years so now you're just scrolling down and each each thousand years it's exactly the same pretty much exactly the same and so each hand is nearly a thousand it's just slightly over a thousand years and for each hand it's exactly the uh, the uh, exactly the same chance of quantum tunneling whatever it might be all the way through so we've got all through all those ends and none of that quantum tunneling has happened so if you go back so we're thinking in terms of quantum tunneling this first end and um, no quantum tunneling happened this end second end no quantum tunneling none, none nowhere in the entire universe click 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 go through 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 none, none of those and there'll be any quantum tunneling of the sort that can cause a false vacuum decay which is to say an instant on which is big enough just the right size to for the universe to collapse and that is uh, really a very very difficult thing to do because it means a large chunk of space-time has to simultaneously uh, change from one Higgs field value to another Higgs field value and so we probably quite often get little fluctuations in the Higgs field and just quantum fluctuations but they just be tiny tiny spots that fluctuate so little quantum fluctuation here there'd be one maybe in Andromeda galaxy one in our galaxy one here and one there um, this one just tiny tiny little patches of space that just wrinkle a little bit and then they immediately flatten out again and they're just not big enough to do anything and so that's how you think you think about the quantum tunneling and to actually for anything to happen you need an entire instant an entire quite large chunk to simultaneously uh, change the, the state of the Higgs field and that is what is so very very difficult and so the we when you do the calculations it's extraordinarily difficult it just doesn't make practical sense at all that, that would happen and the but if you this is just based on well just suppose all we know is that each of these ends is, is whatever the number is they all it's, it's equally difficult for all of them there have been 13.8 million of them so you scroll down no vacuum fluctuation no vacuum no instant and no instant no instant no instant no instant and no instant and no instant and no instant and so this instant the turn just isn't forming in all those ends on 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 it's just not happening and so after uh whatever it is 3.5 million so each each hen is a thousand one hundred years go to the end of dinosaurs the evolution of humans and then you go to jesus born and all that you know the classical cave paintings great films in stone age and then jesus born and two more ends and there still hasn't been a single incident and happened in any of those ends so now you can have a great deal of confidence that in the next end which is now equal to uh, almost exactly a millennium then again nothing is going to happen so I'm sorry that's a little bit more complicated and it's <coughs> and uh, uh, it, but it really makes so it makes so little difference in actual practical terms you can see the vast number of ends and vast number of M's and so but uh, so really I, I didn't I didn't really need to explain that but some people get very kind of picky about it. they want to know all the details and I, I've, I've had people who've uh, uh, who've needed uh, who, who asked me this question I just and this is my my best attempt at explaining it to you so anyway uh, but it really doesn't matter it's much easier to think in terms of the M so I uh, I think that's that's by far the easiest way to think about all this and it just what's the difference between 3.5 million or 13.8 or million it's a vast 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 amount of time and so many millennia and in all that time nothing has happened and there's nothing special about this one so uh, it just can't be it doesn't matter 
it's something we know, something we don't know, something imagined. It doesn't matter if it's something that, you, that we find it difficult even to imagine. It doesn't matter what it is. As long as it it, there's, there's nothing special about this millennium and the universe has been very boring from the point of view of cosmology, nothing has been happening for all those millions of years, then, then um, there just can't be a realistic risk. It just doesn't make sense. So hopefully that, that helps you again uh, with the explain the 13.8 million millennia and the, the 3.5 million ends. And hopefully you have a slightly better, I have an idea of what that is all about.